Hello viewers, welcome to the video tutorial of Concepta and happy Ramadan Karim to everyone. After a long interval, I am coming up once again in front of you with an interesting and one of my favorite topic of steel structure which is compression member. Now let's see what is compression member. A structural member which chiefly carry compression loads are called compression member and example is columns in building can be called compression members. So, uh, compression loads means which create compression. The loads which create compression are called compressive loads. Like if we apply load in a column like this, this is compressive load. And if we apply a load on a column like this, this is tensile load applied on a column. But uh, compression member will chiefly carry compression uh, compressive loads like compression member will chiefly carry load like this pattern so it is clear what is compression member and what type of load is carried by compression uh, member so it will carry mainly compressive loads and uh, example is columns in building so this is the uh, this is our compression member and the uh, uh, type of loads carried uh, uh, and the type of loads chiefly carried by our compression member. Now let's uh, uh, let me introduce to another term before entering into this chapter, which is elastic member. Uh, elastic uh, uh, elastic buckling of column. Sorry, uh, elastic buckling of column. What is elastic buckling of column? Here I have written the definition: compressive load at which a straight column becomes unstable is called critical load or buckling load that means uh, magnitude of compressive load at which compressive member compression member will buckle very slightly or in a small amount for which it will lose its stability oh. is called critical load or it can be called buckling load so uh, for uh, Critical load or uh, critical load or buckling load is uh, accountable for elastic buckling of column. That means uh, our column will buckle elastically if uh, in our column, uh, if in column, uh, uh, if in our column, elastic critical load or buckling load uh, have been uh, imposed upon uh, our column, then it will uh, face elastic buckling. So in summary, it can be said that uh, our uh, elastic buckling of column will take place if critical load or buckling load is imposed on our column. So after elastic buckling of column, let me introduce with four types of buckling that takes place uh, in our structure. So number one is column buckling, number two is local buckling, number three is lateral buckling, number four is shear buckling. So in this in this chapter we will uh, discuss about only column buckling. The rest uh, three buckling like local, lateral, and shear buckling will be discussed when we will discuss about our uh, chapter beam. In this chapter we will discuss about these three types of buckling. Then uh, now uh, what is column buckling? Column buckling means when load on a straight column will be larger than critical load then large lateral deflection will take place, uh, take place that is column buckling so if i repeat that uh, when uh, load on our straight column uh, will be larger than the than our critical load or buckling load which i have uh, said uh, a few seconds earlier uh, then uh, lateral deflection then large lateral deflection which will take place this uh, uh, which will takes place that buckling is called column buckling so it is very simple uh, if I repeat again when load on straight column will be larger than critical load then large lateral def uh, then large lateral deflection will take place then that buckling is called column buckling. So we get uh, some basic idea about buckling and uh, some of the basic concepts related to compression member. Now uh, let's see a derivation of equation. Uh, now let's see a derivation of equation uh, for finding the value of critical load for pin indent column. Uh, in the figure, this is a pin indent column, 
uh, it is in critical state uh, so this should not be in a straight uh, it is in critical load sorry it, it is in critical uh, this pin in that column is in critical load so it has been uh, buckled uh, or uh, buckled or deflected a slight a very slight stay in state this figure uh, in this figure a pin in that column is in critical uh, state so this should not be critical load so this should not be in straight position it will remain slightly in buckle condition so if we consider deflection equals to y and moment equals to m so at any point m equals to py or we can write m uh, instead of uh, moment ei by rho equals to pi here i have written the uh, uh, reason why I have written m equals to ei by rho instead of uh, m which is uh, m equals to ei by rho derived from Napier assumption from Napier assumption we can derive m equals to ei by rho so we can write or minus, uh, minus ei d2y by dx2 equals to py here I have also written the reason why I have uh, uh, written d2 by dy uh, d2y by dx2 instead of uh, 1 by rho here I have written for a small deflection problem we can write 1 by rho equals to minus d2y by dx2 minus d2y by dx2 for a small deflection problem we can write this so or uh, d2y by dx2 plus p by ui p by ei into y equals to 0 I have a uh, rearranged it and uh, uh, interchanged the left hand side and right hand side or d2y by dx2 plus k square y equals to 0 I have taken k equals to p by ei it is taken it is considered it is uh, you can uh, I have taken k you can take any other uh, variable like uh, x y z or any other thing but I have taken k k equals to p by ei so solution of this differential equation is y equals to a sin kx plus b cos kx so uh, a sin so by applying from boundary condition value of a and b uh, value of a and b should be found out by applying this boundary condition we have to find out the value of a and b so by applying uh, first of all by applying boundary condition at x equals to 0 and y equals to 0 we can uh, uh, found 0 equals to a sin 0 plus b cos 0 so b equals to 0 we have uh, putting uh, we have put the value of x and y 0 in this equation and then we found out b equals to 0 again if we consider uh, x equals to l here x is there here our x is this and y is this so if we consider that x equals to l again applying another boundary condition x equals to l and y equals to 0 we have found out 0 equals to a sine kl plus 0 a sin kl equals to 0 so either a equals to 0 or a sin kl equals to 0 but a cannot be 0 because if a equals to 0 then a sin kl will be uh, a sin kl will be 0 then y will be 0 and y equals to 0 is for a straight column but our column is slightly deflected it's not a straight column so y cannot be 0 for which our a cannot be 0 so uh, we can surely say that sine k our sine kl will be 0 so as a cannot be 0 so surely sine kl will be 0 now sine as sine kl equals to 0 so value of kl can be pi twice pi dot 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 n pi if we take the first value of kl equals to pi it represents half sine wave deflection like this it is a half sine half so k equals to pi represents half sine wave deflection like this like our uh, column will deflect um, elastically like this now if the uh, value of k l is 2 pi then it will deflect like this and it indicates that there is a intermediate support in the mid span of the column and if the uh, value of k l is equals to 3 pi then it will uh, deflect in this way that means it is a pi 1 pi it is it is 1 pi and it is 1 pi so total 3 pi and it will deflect like this and 3 pi will indicate that there is two intermediate uh, support uh, in our column so now if we take uh, kl equals to pi then is square it on both side k square l square equals to pi square then putting k equals to p by ei as we have uh, taken considered earlier that uh, k equals to p by ei 
and if we put the value of uh, k uh, in this equation like k equals to p by e i then into l square equals to pi square then we have rearranged it the equation like this p equals to pi square uh, e i into uh, l square here the coefficient of l is uh, l is 1 and this one is effective length factor k in this equation our uh, coefficient of l is 1 and this one is the effective length factor k so therefore we can write uh, p critical load uh, if we can call this also critical load pcr equals to pi square ei divided by kl whole square now uh, when we have found the critical load we can easily found the critical stress which is uh, sigma cr so uh, stress equal uh, stress equals to load by area here load is a uh, critical load pcr which we have found in the earlier in this uh, from this equation and we have uh, put the value of uh, pcr from this equation in this uh, in the value instead of uh, instead of critical load so uh, our equation have become pi square e divided by kl square into a so uh, pi square then we have may uh, write pi square e into i by a we have we have uh, uh, t uh, we have uh, rearranged the equation li in like in this way uh, like pi square e into i by a divided by kl whole square so pi square e r square in divided by kl square here uh, r in indicates radius of gyration and it is i by a so we can write pi square e r square divided by kl whole square so then we have uh, um, replaced the r in the denominator side like this pi square e divided by kl by r whole square then we get the final equation of critical stress, uh, critical stress sigma cr equals to pi square e divided by kl by r uh, kl by r whole square so that's it uh, um, there's the uh, derivation of uh, p in indirect column uh, which is in critical load so hopefully you have understand it uh, and uh, uh, if you have any query about this video you can uh, uh, question on comment box so stay uh, healthy and stay happy thank you everyone